Hello all and welcome back to this module on Blue Prism. In this module, I'm going to show you sundry important topics in Blue Prism. So first I'll show you save stop. If I open this uh, process, which I've already created here, I have a, a, a long running process. It will do 10,000 iterations. And uh, once these 10,000 iterations are reached, it will come to an end. So I published this process so that I can run it from the control room. When I go to the control room I, and I schedule a session for this process and I run this by right clicking play saying start. It will run now, but it will continue till 10,000 iterations. What if I have to stop it somewhere in the between? I have two options. I can right click and either click on immediate stop or click on request stop. If I click on immediate stop, it's running and now it has stopped. So we see it immediately stopped. If I open the log by double clicking on this entry, so we are on the 12th page of this log. So here we see that the current index was 3970, which was like uh, it had still not reached the 10,000 iteration that we had set for it to run. So here we see that it was stopped due to some undefined, uh, uh, like it says process stopped on an undefined stage. So that was immediate stop. Now what is a request stop? If I schedule one more session of this process and this time I will request a stop rather than saying immediate stop, I'll say request stop. So I'll right click and we'll click on request stop. So the status changes to stopping, but it will not stop. It will continue running until the uh, until all the 10,000 iterations are completed. So request stop has no impact on my process unless I do something in my process to allow request stop to stop the process. So the way that we, I can do it is if I go to my process, open this save stop demo. Here uh, we can like in the immediate stop, it stopped immediately. Whichever stage this process was on, it stopped that process immediately. Now this can lead to a corrupted state of uh, maybe our queue or something that we are doing important. Maybe if someone requests for a stop, he would like to come to a point at which we can logically make this process to terminate rather than just stopping abruptly. So to do that, we use a, a stop, a, like safe stop. And for that, we take a decision stage and we'll check is stop requested. And we have a function which will check whether a stop has been requested or not. It's an environment function. So when I expand environments, and I scroll down, I can see here is stop requested. Let me paste this, click OK. So when a stop is requested, we know that uh, we need to stop it gracefully. We need to close our connections and, uh, and then stop it. So what we can do is, let me put a note stage and I will call this close systems and log out. Okay. So uh, once a stop is requested, we will close all everything and then we will link it to the end stage. So we need to include this somewhere in our iterations that we are having. So after increment index, maybe I'll check for stop requested. And if a stop has been requested, we'll close systems and log out. And uh, maybe we'll have an end stage which will close this. And if the stop is not requested, then maybe we can go and take the next iteration. So let me rearrange these things. So we can see here that uh, it will check for a stop request in every iteration. If stop is requested, it will gracefully shut down Otherwise, it will keep on continuing the iterations. 
So let me close this. I'll save it. Now if I go to the control room and uh, we can see that the second instance it completed. It didn't stop even though we set a stop request. So if I open the log, I can see that the index it reached 10,000 and then it came to an end. So I'll schedule another session. Run this. And uh, when I right click and say request stop, it's stopping and it has completed. If I open the log, I can see here that uh, it came to the increment index. It changed to 733. And it checked, like we can see stop requested is called uh, all after in each index, sorry, in each iteration it's being called. So here, this decision becomes true. Earlier it was false for all the iterations, but here this becomes true. And then it does, it executes that node stage and shuts down the process. So we can use is stop requested function in, in our decision stage in our processes to make our process stop at a logical point. When you are running your Blue Prism processes uh, from the control room, it is being logged in the database and you can see the log when we double clicked on these sessions over here. These are the logs that we can see over here. So we get these logs. For example, if I open up any uh, any size over here, uh, then we can see that these stages, if I open these stages, these have logs enabled on them, like stage logging is enabled. Uh, so if you don't want logging to be uh, done from these stages, you can disable it or maybe you can just log any errors that occur on these stages. So these are the three different options that you can choose for any stage. If you want to change the logging for multiple stages, you can select the uh, stages and then go to edit and uh, go to the selected stages and can enable disable logging on them or just log errors only on these stages or if you want you can do it on all these stages in your in your uh, in your diagram uh, by default all these stages in the process studio they have logging enabled on them however if i open up any stage in the object studio uh, we see that here logging is disabled by default so in object studio logging is disabled by default and in process studio logging is enabled by default and the same principle holds good here as well that is if you have multiple stages uh, right now i don't have multiple stages but if you have multiple stages you can select those multiple stages and go to edit and uh, change the logging for those stages or do it for all these stages on your on your diagram page information stages are not logged uh, and the data items are logged only when their values are used as inputs and outputs. Sometimes you will find that when you have a lot of processes or objects inside your studio, it is difficult to find one. Uh, so a nice way of uh, managing these processes and objects is creating folders over here. So we can right click processes and click on create group give this group some name, uh, maybe all the related processes we can put inside this group over here. So we can just drag and drop these processes within this group and can create a nice structured organization over here. We can also create subgroups uh, within this and can move certain things inside subgroups. Similarly, we can create uh, this kind of a structure and for objects as well. When we have some processes or objects that we would like to share with our colleagues or move them to the production environment or to, uh, to a staging environment, uh, what we can do is we can export these processes or business objects as XML files. And these XML files can be sent via email uh, to the other side and then they can be imported in the blue prism uh, as processes or objects. So here, let's say if I want to send a safe stop demo, 
then I can click on file export process object it's a process that I want to export click next select the process which I need to export so I can select this one click next and then give the path where you would like to save it I'll click on browse and maybe save it here under documents click save and it saves here by this name uh, as an XML file and finish so once it has been exported I can import it on the other end by going to file import and then we can browse to that XML file I saved it under documents so this should be over here and click on open and we can click next since I already have this process it's saying would you like to overwrite it or would you like to give it a new name or would you not like to import this process so if I want I can give it a new name and say imported process click next and finish and I can see that imported process over here so if I open it it's exactly the same as what I tried to export save stop demo so this is like importing exporting individual items however if there are a group of things which you like to collectively export or import uh, because for example if you are using this safe stop demo and it's using some other process and it's also using some objects then uh, you would like to send all of these things together as a single package rather than sending individual XML files also to migrate all of these parts individually uh, would be an error prone task uh, that would require careful attention to detail and uh, uh, so for this reason Blue Prism provides the release manager which allows user to create checklists known as packages so if I go to the releases over here I can create a package by right clicking package over you I click a new package give this some name maybe I want to do a backup so I can I can call this a backup package where I will keep everything in this package click next give some description next and then you can choose what all items would be part of your package so for example if I want all of my process I can move it here if I want some only this particular business object or maybe all my business objects as part of this backup I can keep it here any work queue I want to keep this work queue as part of this package any calendars schedules web services which all web service also you would like to keep the any tiles any dashboard uh, so all these things uh, or maybe an individual item on the dashboard they can be exported as part of this package so I just maybe keep these things click next and it creates a package so when we create a package we don't get anything substantial it's just the definition that we have given like what all would be things that I want to export so here I can see the list of things that will be part of my package now when I want to send it I need to create a release out of it so if I click new release it will ask me to give it a name maybe I can say this is a uh, uh, first iteration and click on next give some notes click next and can choose the path where you would like to save it it gives an extension BP release and click next it exports that and creates a BP release file out of it now you can send that BP release file uh, uh, to to your colleagues uh, and they can import it and once they import that BP release file they will get all these objects that have been part of this package so uh, now you don't have to maintain individual XML files and those XML files um, can get out of sync but when you're working with packages they would all be having the same uh, working uh, version of these individual items